Legends 420. Mr. Grow It. And Rob from Cannabis Lifestyle TV. From the Stash Podcast. Hey, what's up, guys? Do you want to get your hands on the latest From the Stash merch? Check the links below, get the From the Stash store, and go check to see the latest drop. We appreciate all the support, as always, and we will check you in the next epi. Thanks to Ventana Plant Science for sponsoring this episode. I started using their bottle Flavor in my garden. Flavor can be added to any nutrient lineup. Studies have shown an increased yield of 14%, and also increased terpenes from 1.1 to 2.4%. Flava is an all-natural polymer that holds nutrients in solution. It also prevents precipitants of nutrients and increases nutrient uptake. Flava is available on growershouse.com. I'll provide a link in the description section below. And you can use coupon code THESTASH for a discount. AC Infinity, leaders in garden innovation. From tents to controllers, AC Infinity can take your garden to the next level. The inline fans lead the pack with the ability to control all aspects of the equipment along with the clip-on oscillating fan that changed the game which all can be controlled with the controller 69. Whether you're looking for individual pieces for your current grow or you're trying to set up something completely new with one of their grow kits, AC Infinity has you covered from top to bottom. Use discount code THESTASH15 at checkout to save some money on your order. But there's a lot of shit that uh, has been lost, man. That's something we want to talk about. Shout out to, I'm not sure who said that comment today, Chris, but MS. Chris, MS. Yes. Okay. MS was mentioning something today about, uh, you know, lost strains, old school shit, stuff that has, has come and gone or may still be out there, but unfortunately, most of us don't have our hands on it. And I know myself, I've got plenty of fucking stories of losing those great white buffaloes, we'll say. And there's been a few that I've wanted to get, and I've never been able to find that exact, you know, real classic dank. I don't know about you boys, but when I first started, that's what most of my shit was, was the classic good ones. And then, they're gone. They're all gone. You ever experience well, what, any uh, loss in the garden with those? Yeah. Yeah. I've had a, quite a few strains over the day that I kind of just, I, I didn't really uh, take on cloning as seriously as I should, as early as I should have. And a lot of great strains just went down with the wind as, uh, as I would harvest them. And uh, one of those ones is like, uh, uh, I, I did some Thai sticks. It was a, uh, it, it, uh, it, great great smoke wonderful smoke and and yeah gone gone with the wind and another one was uh, the holland's hope that i recently got got a cut of or at least uh, some genetics of and uh it came around but yeah generally speaking uh not only do they get lost but i'm not totally sold on the genetics that they're telling me are what they say they are i'm a little skeptical of that so are they are they really here or are some of these like really iconic strains gone? Man, Thai sticks. Wow. I haven't heard that in a long time. I thought that was like obsolete back in the early nineties or something like that. I don't know anybody who's grown out Thai sticks, but that's definitely a throwback. Um, no, some of the throwbacks that I've grown there. out and, and smoked uh, you know, back in the day, some of them are still around. Some of them I haven't heard of. I don't even know if anybody's grown them out anymore. Um, NY City Diesel. So I haven't heard of anybody growing that out uh, quite recently. It's definitely a throwback from you know early 2000s. I had friends, I would go over their place and they had that growing and they were cloning it. And eventually I grew some of that. Um, strawberry coffee, you hear about that? Like that was way back then. Um, that one is still around. You hear about people still uh, having that still around. However, when we talk deeper into replicas, which I'm sure we're going to be talking here pretty soon, uh, that has been replicated multiple times. So like the real genetics probably may not be around still unless you're getting clones from back then. Uh, Northern Lights, another one, just throwing that out there. Old school strain from the from the 90s, right? But it's still replica today. Uh, man, so much good stuff. And uh, I've definitely lost a lot of strains that may not be old school ones, but strains that I, or cultivars, if we want to be correct, politically correct, <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, cultivars that... Um, I just wish I cloned. I had great phenos of them, great smoke, and just wish I cloned. And now they're lost, and I can't get those phenos back. So. Absolutely, man. Like, funny enough, a few of the ones that you mentioned I've grown. Um, Strawberry cough in particular, I got it from. It was the guy was originally a connection from my grandma, 
So he's my grandma's plug, like in the seventies or eighties, and then became my mom's. And then I weaseled my way into it until I fucked up the connection because I was young and dumb. But I found some uh, some seeds in his strawberry cough, and it was choice stuff. And he never would come up with with clones or cuts or anything. And I ended up growing it out, and it was pretty damn dank. But it took so long to grow, man. It was like a twelve weeker, eleven week or something like that. And at the time, I was like eight week or you're gone. So I didn't even care before it was even finished. I killed the clones off like an idiot. And mine was like the dankest version of it. It was so fucking good, man. So good. And of course, I just at the time didn't realize I could, you know, clone a, a flowering plant. It was way early. This was like 2009, maybe 2008. Like when I first got my medical card. The issue was the grass was always greener at the time. You know, everything that I had, I thought I could get a better version. I also had a... Oh, my kids are going wild. Go chill. Go chill. I actually had a, uh, speaking of kids losing kids, uh, this situation was real hard for me. I had an LA Confidential. I don't know if you guys remember that one. It's not too old school, but it's, uh, oh, yeah. it's older school. Man, it was so dang. This is before you'd get a lot of purple bud. This shit turned like black. It was just so funky, greasy, nasty. The biggest issue I had with it is it was so little. So my canopy would be like banging, 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 boop, random drop off. And common sense would have been put it on a crate or something, lift it up. But again, because I was a rookie with it, I thought, oh, I'll just find a better one. I'll go get, uh, at the time, it was a pink conning paralyzer. It was one that was like a Michigan-only strain. And it's nowhere near as good. Nowhere near as good. Disappointed I let the other one go. And I'll never get it back because I've seen a few that are never even comparable. How about Maui Waui? That was one way back then where, uh, oh, man, you hear about the early 90s. And, and I know a couple people that have grown it out. And back then, it was looks a lot different than now with some of the replicas that are out there. Like I grew out the one by ILGM. They have a Maui Waui. And I know there's some controversy about ILGM and what they're doing as far as their naming convention. But uh, it was the, the, the Maui Waui I grew from them was nothing like back in the day. It was just completely different uh, structure, completely different look, completely different flavor profile, cannabinoid profile. And uh, I miss the old stuff. You know, some of the old stuff, it's, I miss it now. Lower THC content and a lot of that stuff, right? Over the years, uh, we don't know, 10, 20, 30 plus years, a lot of people have been focusing on getting that higher THC content. So the lower stuff isn't much around. But we talked about this in previous episodes. We've The, the THC content isn't the end all be all, right? Isn't the, the, shouldn't be the number one focus is a lot, what a lot of people say. It's the overall cannabinoid profile you know what i mean that gives you that that effect so just focusing on high thc strains well you could potentially get higher off of a lower thc strain due to the other cannabinoids that are in there but i don't want to get too much off topic i do miss the maui waui the old stuff from back in the day and uh, i just wish that that same type of plant was still around somebody's got a cut let me know <laughs> i i if i'm not mistaken and now since you're you're saying this i i've I grew the Maui Waui from uh, Ocean Grown. Uh, they have also got some as well. And uh, it, the only thing I don't, didn't like about it was like the 12-week flowering cycle. It, uh, it, it went forever, and I, un I did not anticipate that. So I was treating her like everything else, and she, kinda she, she got a little bit uh, away from me. And the only downside of that is I never had this strain back in the day. So I don't really know, you know... I had nothing to compare it to, you know, but yeah. You... And well, that's the thing is we don't know with these replicas too. There's a ton of them. You look at like ILGM and, and a million other brands that are out there now. They'll have a white widow. They'll have a pineapple express. They'll have a train wreck, a chem dog. They're not the originals. They're, they're literally just replicas. So unless you know the original flavor, which at one point was a clone only because people didn't have seeds available, then you don't really know if this is the tried and true one. And, and that's the problem I feel like when you're ordering these new ones is we just don't know if it's legit. You know, I've had maybe 10 different versions of White Widow and I don't think any of them were White Widow. The OGs that I've smoked with were like, no, this, like they laughed at it. They're like, this is not fucking White Widow. Just like I would if somebody brought me, a, you know, a cultivar I've been smoking a ton for years. I'd be like, I ain't no headbanger, quit playing. But again, phenotypes play a big variety, but it's how I look at it too is, we haven't had the same experience in terms of what they've had back, way back in the day. So we may think something's better or worse based on our palate or what we're used to. But 
the 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 classic stuff that's been out there for a long time is what a lot of our new cultivars are built from. And a big reason like uh, you know, runts or these others are popular is because the original parents, the parents' parents, the grandparents. But then like Todd McCormick over on a, a podcast we were on at one point, I uh, was talking about how a lot of these cultivars have been bred out literally just because breeders don't want to have these 12 week cultivars because they can't do it outside for the, the climate or for the environment. They're changing it for commercial grow more than the quality terpenes because they, they can't grow it, you know? So at this point, we've got a, a fight between the quality, which now we can do at home inside and however we want versus the mass production. So Stuff's coming back. There is, uh, you know, Todd's company is, is bringing back some of these originals, but it's hard to find companies that have a quantity of the quality. You know what I'm saying? They'll sell out quick and it's gone. hundred percent. The Todd McCormick's in the world are far and few between the, the, the idea that, you know, uh, again, if I'm not mistaken, regular seed banks would not take, I don't know if it's still, if it's changed cannabis seeds. You know, so uh, uh, these genetics, a lot of these genetics, if not maintained, and how could they have been lost, you know, have been lost and not necessarily lost, but diluted through time. And it's, you know, when you, when you breed them with others to bring, to, to maintain and, you know, you're losing, you're losing some of that integrity of, of, of the grandparents. And that's where it's like, I, I don't believe, I, I'm going to say it's over 50% of when something's labeled as one thing and i and and they say that's what i'm getting i i just simply don't believe it i've had s so many instances where i've had the ability to compare something with something else and sure phenotypes are important but you should still like a, 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 as an iconic strain it, it has fundamentals there's just certain variables there's certain cannabinoids there's certain experiences and expressions that have to be there and if they're not there, then it's like, well, wait a second, what is this? And so it's like, I just feel like companies have just taken seeds and run with it. And, you know, countless times you've got these uh, Instagram genetic, these Instagram uh, breeders that are literally just resealing seeds and selling them as their own. So now you're getting possibly a white widow, possibly a Girl Scout cookies, possibly a, or a, 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 a cough, you know, but it's, it's relabeled as something else and then sold as something else. So it's gone. And those traits are still there, but they're gone. It's gone through. It's, it, there, there's no more, you know, physical evidence of what's left there. Now, is it possible to get an actual reading of the genetics and have it something for it to be compared to? That, that's the tough side of things. And this is, again, where the Todds of the world, you know, Todd McCormick's who know some of these OGs who've been growing for so long and have the original. And they can say, oh, no, yeah, I'm still growing this. And he literally has gone back and found, like, Northern Lights number 5 and Skunk 1 from the original people because he still knows these guys are in his mm -hmm. rolodex mm -hmm. so you've got a lot of situations where these are going to come back more i think he literally said he wants to bring them back for breeding purposes not so everybody just grows that alone but so someone could take that and start something fresh with the brand with the original stuff instead of this muddy down diluted version that we're dealing with now with with unstable genetics so if we've got more of these people who will do that that'll create that that trickle down so to speak and i think it's going to really change the game in terms of, of quality genetics. Because if more and more people have original stable genetics to start with, it should stick closer to that. You know what I'm saying? Instead of being 20, 30 years out, we've been breeding and breeding and breeding and losing the original characteristics of these cultivars. We're going to be able to find these and really isolate these with the science we know nowadays versus what was back in the day, which is some guys just kind of shaking their male plant into the female and making it work, you know? Yeah, I think... You mentioned money down. You said replica knockoffs. Is that a good word for it as well? Knockoffs These like knockoff that. genetics. Yep. Let's <laughs> wow. say that. They're like uh, uh, fake Jordans. Right. Uh, yeah, I definitely got to agree with Pigeons when he says, you know, 50%. Probably more than that are these. I was these trying to be conservative. Replicas. Yeah, I tried to be conservative, right? But it's probably something crazy like 85 or 90%. It's like it could be outrageous in that amount. I remember uh, I got some Blue Dream from the dispensary here in Las Vegas. And this was this was a couple years back, probably like four, five years back actually. And uh, I met up with Envy Closet Med Grower and we, we smoked some of it. I was like, I hey, got this blue dream I got from dispensary. 
He looked at it, sniffed it. He's like, this isn't this isn't Blue Dream. I know the breeder. Like I've gotten cuts off him, or I don't know if he said he got cuts off him, but he he like either knew the breeder or or whatever, and he knew exactly what the Blue Dream was. He's like, this is this is not it, you know. So it's like <laughs> similar to Rob's friend laughing him out for the White Widow. Uh, you know, I had people see something of mine, you know, that I thought was something, and they're like, no. I would also like to thank Thick Ass Glass for sponsoring today's video. They were kind enough to hit us up with three beautiful pieces. If you head over to thickassglass.com, use promo code the stash, you can save 25% off all things from the website, whether it's an ash catcher, whether it's a small pipe, or a big, beautiful glass piece such as this one. Go over to thickassglass.com and use promo code the stash. They've got you covered. Also, head on over to their Instagram and thank them for being a sponsor of today's episode. And then Rob talking about searching people down on Instagram, the actual breeder. So if you are looking for a cut from it, mine as well. You know, I think that's great advice to actually track down the breeder on Instagram and say, hey, is this still around? You still have this plan and get it through them or get seeds through them or find out what seed banks have them that he's given it to them, you know, instead of... Uh, yeah potentially getting sucked into buying some of these replicas that are on some of these, you know, no name or lesser known seed banks. Homework goes a long way, you know, and I, I, you know, it's, it's solid advice to tell someone to try to find the original breeder for some of these genetics, you know, in easier said than done for a lot of the newer ones versus the older ones, you know, a lot of these have been lost uh, or, or allegedly they're just, you know, hard to find or, or they're being sold as something else like i said i said 50 percent. trying to be conservative in all reality again i don't think that it's i don't think you're getting what you're you're buying if you're not getting from a a reputable source or the source itself you know um because i just feel like it's just so easy to make money when you can label something as white widow or you know strawberry cough or Maui Wowie, you know, these are the names that people just naturally jump to when you consider your 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 choices, you know. And now I I just, I, I, I want to go back just a little because I I made a mistake in saying that seeds like cannabis seeds weren't stored in seed vaults. They weren't accepted into seed vaults. I said seed banks, and that, that's a huge difference. Um, but seed vaults, so you couldn't in throughout time. No one has been collecting cannabis seeds and their strains. Whereas there's, you should Google it sometime. There's these incredible vaults in the earth that are literally meant to protect the genetics, protect seeds of all kinds of crops from around the world and so on and so forth. They're seed vaults. And, and cannabis was not accepted. So, you know, it only makes sense that throughout time, a lot of these genetics have been lost, you know? And, and I don't know, do, do they ever come back? Do, 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 does this genetic grow naturally somewhere in the world? That'd be a question I, I would love to, love to know. See, and that would be like the, for the, the land races. So you've got some that potentially would, but again, right. so right. many down that we don't really have those at least not in the mainstream world i think over time again it's going to come out as things are 100 percent legal at a certain point cultivation being 100 percent legal i think more of these genetics will start to come, they'll come out you know somebody on their dying bed will be like hey deathbed they'll be like hey uh i did got right these seeds here. make yeah. sure these get to the government or not the government the scientists you know, <laughs> keep around you know this is this will cure cancer or something like i really think there'll be more people who will do that the problem is money well, there is a genetics company that has land races only, World of Seeds. I believe they only do land races. That's it. So like Pakistan Valley, for example, something uh, cultivar I've mentioned many, many times, that's a land race. And I got that from them. And uh, I think they have a long list of just land races. And that's all they sell is land race strains, which is pretty cool to try to conserve those genetics. Yeah. See, and that's, that's the kind of companies that are do right for... Uh, the breeders and for the community right now hype cultivars is, is really where it's at everybody likes to get what's popular because if you are someone who's in the gray area we'll say of things you want what's hot you want what people are after and nobody's coming to you for blue dream or durban poison or fucking strawberry cough unless they're older you know then they might be on that every day buying a lid but uh nowadays it's not really the case 
So it's, it's kind of difficult to see uh, where the market is to see if we're going to have these land races or these originals, these, these old school cultivars come back. Now, one that was, I wouldn't say old school, but that I had, it was a uh, kosher kush crossed with OG 18. It was Holy Grail Kush. Whew, it was my favorite. I loved it so much. Now, I cloned the wrong plant. I had two different plants, and one looked just like it. They were color-coded. It was stupid, and uh, I cloned the wrong one. I cloned this Cindy that I didn't like, a Cinderella 99, which was actually a good one, too, but it wasn't what I wanted. So I ended up uh, keeping that for three months until it was flowering. I'm like, bitch, wrong one. I bought five packs, which was pretty expensive at the time. Well, six packs. I spent $1,000 on, on, uh, on these beans here. Did not find that same one ever. Never found the same one again. And it's that, that letting it go problem. Sometimes it's intentional. <clears throat> Excuse me. Sometimes it's intentional and sometimes it's accidental. And most times for me, it's been accidental. But then going to find that same one via phenotype, that's pretty hard. That's pretty hard. So even new school or old school, you don't want to let something go that you really like. Sometimes let it sit and chill and keep it small, if, even if you have to. I've done that for, with Headbanger for a while actually i'm just now bringing it back to flower i mean the last time i flowered it out was when when we were in vegas so before then i harvested like three weeks or a month before that otherwise it's just been sitting small because i'm like fuck i i might just replace it you know so don't lose something instead of that because i can't find any of the headbanger seeds anywhere those don't exist as far as i know that'd be it Somebody mentioned in the, the Twitch chat here, and for those that are watching this on YouTube after the fact, we do record these episodes live on Twitch, twitch.tv slash from the stash podcast every Tuesday and Thursday at 12 p.m. Central Time. Uh, we're on here recording these episodes live. Somebody mentioned Panama Red. And uh, correct me if I'm wrong, Pigeons, but I believe you grew that out like, what was it, five, four or five years ago? Haha. <laughs> I've I grew it wasn't a Panama red oh. it was it was just Panama and okay. yes yeah yeah I it, it grew wonderfully for me I had I had no issues with it as well um, but no it, yeah it wasn't a red I did a I did a Panama and I've done a red poison and the and the red poison and the reason I mentioned the red poison in particular is because it was an auto it only grew this high and it. Uh, it, it, it harvested me like an eighth of weed and it was kind of like the joke around the channel that you know uh that was the one you know that was that was the one i needed to do again and it, it too was a difficult one to find it's kind of similar to the uh, ch uh the cherry red oh cherry soda oh gosh it's ch cherry bomb Cherry bomb. cherry bomb. I grew cherry bomb. I had that one years ago. And who knows if this is back when you were just getting clones for the most part, people were. Well, maybe not you, but in Michigan. Mm, yeah, no, I got all seeds. You know? But yeah. So who knows? I had the Cinderella ninety nine that I loved, and then I smoked it again with with an OG and he was like, I don't think that's Cindy. He's like, Maybe you you shared it different. I don't know. He's like, That that doesn't taste like a Cinderella to me. I'm like, son of a bitch. But again, were people paying attention to phenotypes then and like the genotype was that ever a thought process back then or was there just one that went around from fucking england to michigan to you know everywhere people smoked it in mexico it's like how how did this same one get everywhere it's crazy i don't know it didn't <laughs> it did <laughs> i don't think so that's where i think literally this all begins you know wink i just sent you a, a link can you pull that shit up it's check this out you guys are gonna laugh you got to see this. And for those of you guys tuning in on the podcast platforms, definitely want to head over to YouTube and check this out, the video that we have here. Um, well, it's actually an image. High Times Top 40 Strains of the of 1977. Yep. Fucking mid. Look at that stuff. What are you talking about? That's some fire. Oh yeah, you're some of these gold, puckle puckle gold. Yeah. Uh, somebody mentioned that Hawaiian. We've got Thai got a whole bunch of ugly looking stuff there um i don't know if any of you guys recognize recognized any of these strains from back then but uh looks like pure garbage i don't think anybody would want to smoke any of that stuff these days anybody could see it there we go and yeah, yeah if, if you're if you're listening essentially you're looking at a a bunch of a, a bunch of different strains here that are cultivars that have been listed for the 1970s and it's just very fluffy it's very light there's not a lot of dense denseness to this at all there is a lot of color if i may 
and this is probably still tasty as smoke, but I bet you it just it, because it couldn't be grown to its maximum potential, it looks like this. Of and course, it, it has. It, it, there's no there's no LEDs here. There's no HPSs here. Someone's growing this in the back forty of somewhere in California. Like we're talking, we're talking un, no nutrients, if at best, you know, uh, just coming straight from the soil, and no modifications to genetics. You know, this is just straight plant you know it's only through the evolution of what we know about plants that we have you know um been able to modify the genetics to have sweeter denser frostier tastier bud you yeah. know when well, it's gotten to the point now where people want bag appeal people want bud structure with that they want you know everything that comes along with it so modifications of these cultivars over time is what it is but then You've got some people who they're trying to get the best versions of these and other people who are trying to get money so they don't give a shit, you know? I think it's, I do think it's interesting though. Like this did it for the people back then. You know what I mean? Do you think, like, do you think they were like, Cheech was as high as we were in 1970 yeah. right now? Like he, he, when we, we interviewed him for those that don't know, we did interview Cheech uh no, chong. or chong sorry chong. chong my apologies and uh he he did he like he mentioned that he's like been this high for for so many years you know it's just it do you think it's like just our tolerance has required us no, to get 99 think, thinking about he, they, he could have even been higher because the fact that we've gotten used to this we've we've gradually increased that yes. was like a boom dank for that you know what i'm saying like if he didn't start smoking mids and he was just smoking fire essentially like think about you remember the uh nintendo or let's blow some minds the sega so with the sega mm. that was next level for me because sega and nintendo was cool but sega had some extra shits and i was like whoa 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 and then the dreamcast came out so at the time dreamcast was the shit right all these consoles they were the shit at that time you yep. had the best experience yep. of your life yep it's great it's analogy respect it's only in hindsight do we look back and we're like oh that wasn't shit it's like well you Compared to this, but at this time they were having the time. It of their was life. amazing. Exactly. It was amazing. So, you know, yeah, that's I a great think, analogy. I believe. I believe that. I believe that. Yeah, that's a, that's a great way to put it. Because there would have been a reason for them to get the weed of today to this point. You know what I mean? Yeah. They would have been that fueled. You know that. Whoa, man! To to spend time and be like, whoa, man! And then whoa, man! You know, next level. But see, yeah. we've incrementally grown as, as consumers for us. We've grown slowly but surely because like smoking brick or mids or lower grade to, you know, different forms of extracts to, you know, edibles to what we have now. We've had like an evolution of cannabis that's been mm -hmm. massive, just like technology at a certain point. So for us, it's different. We're kind of spoiled. You know what I'm saying? And I feel like our tolerances as well. And we probably aren't hitting those same, uh, you know, receptors in our brain because of what's going on in distractions in the world and technology and things we have in our body so they probably were a lot more stoned even the fact that things were more pure and and the lack of uh anxiety or stress in the air so to speak you know there's a lot of different um different factors that come into it but Variables. i really do feel like that shit was just this is just ugly and was <laughs> not trimmed and just not grown by a great grower but i bet you dank flower like if you smoked it you'd be like damn that shit tastes nice you know i totally agree with you Go I ahead. think the THC percent back then was like what seven percent or something crazy, like super low, under ten percent. I think, yeah, I think lower than that, even maybe even five percent. And then, yeah, uh, yeah grad like you mentioned, it gradually kind of increased. Got the quality got better and better. And then early nineties, I believe, we were, we were maxing out at like nineteen percent. That was like a huge deal in the nineties to be that. And now, what are we at? We're we're in the thirties. Barcelona, percent. Spain, some uh, late two thousand was thirty six. In we flower. might even have reached 40 i don't i don't even know you probably but, have probably yeah. have but you know what that that kind of leads us somewhere where perhaps this is a great conversation for another time uh the evolution of cannabis in general you know um i, I think makes for a great conversation you two have already with tommy and you've uh, already and, and we kind of that. almost <laughs> talked about that uh yeah it was you know that's something i ask you guys whether you're watching here on twitch twitch.tv slash from the stash podcast live in front of a live audience uh, and commenting in the chat or whether you're on YouTube um, commenting in the comment section. What do you think when it comes to the genetics 
of of being lost and what do you think about a future episode of the evolution of cannabis you know it's uh it's it, it it's a lot of insight when we can read back on the comments and see what you guys think when it comes to it because it can be quite insightful you know a lot of these strains that you guys have mentioned today in the chat i didn't even hear of you know and it's crazy to think that you know i've been in the game at least for at least for 15 plus years and to think i have haven't heard of even the oldest school strains you know there's a lot to be learned yeah want to right. hear from you i like it one I like more it. i want to mention one more cool. skunk number one skunk. gotta talk about yes. that one skunk <laughs> I know Woo. people are going to go crazy in the chat and uh, I'm definitely looking forward to hearing people's stories in the chat, in the comments. I mean, skunk number one. Oh my God. That like, it just blew off the doors as far as smoke. And that's, that's where the name came from, I believe. And I think it went from like skunk number one, it's got to be like a skunk number two, I believe. And then I don't know if they did a skunk number three. I don't really know the history behind that, that cultivar either, but man, skunk number one, I've grown that out. My friends have grown that out. And it was just like the whole house just reeked from that one. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah, I had a skunk wood crossed with Northern Lights. That was a, a danky wood. That was actually one of the first episodes of CLTV. Funny enough, Trey was doing it at Rolling a Blunt with that. Like, oh, throwback. Well, it's a great strain, literally true to its name. It, and I think more than ever, it makes you like, it just wonders like, where would, where would weed have been without it? You know what I mean? Because I personally love it. So it's like, I, could have taken a whole different turn, you know? And where's so, weed oh, to go? You know what I mean? If this is where we are today, the evolution, again, again, extracts have gone so far in just the last five years. Think about how far we're going to go with just genetics, just breeding and, and, and you know, uh, just the, the, the further breaking down of the plant. And once we establish the extraction or, you know, um, um, the manipulation of other cannabinoids like wow wow i was just what gonna say yeah there's got to be uh you know other cannabinoids kind of increasing having more than the thc and less focus of thc but we're gonna save that for another episode i don't totally, want to dive into that totally, one totally totally yeah. guys of course if you're watching this on youtube as we mentioned we do stream this on twitch.tv slash from the stash podcast we actually have a smoke session right after the episode so if you're watching here on twitch right now stick around we're gonna say goodbye to youtube and remind you to come check us out on twitch.tv slash from the stash podcast and and, uh, and, and smoke a session with the folks over on Twitch. Man, that was a hell of a conversation, boys. Uh, yeah, yeah. Rob, you want to see us out for YouTube? Well, with that being said, it's your boy Rob, Chris, and Pigeons. We'll see you all next time. Peace.